Zeit. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by BlackRifleCoffee.com. That's the sigh of satisfaction, Jabes. Okay. <laughs> That's the sigh of justice. That's the sigh of a man who's at his peak happiness right now. Why? This is way, way overdue, in my opinion. In my humble opinion, this is way overdue. Guy Fieri. Come on, the mayor. A this flavor is my town. my guy. This is my guy, dude. We don't often lead off the show with the revolutionary figure of the day. We're going to do it today uh, because this special man deserves it. Uh, he's been bleaching and beaching, you know? Yeah. Beaching dumps all over the world. Oh, just flushing. Talking about Guy Fieri. He got his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Boy, can we, can we clap that? Fieri. 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 Very Welcome Italian. To Flavor Town, Very brother. Italian, that guy. Very Italian. Man, I, when I read that, I, uh, I'm not going to lie. I, I got a little emotional. Got a little, right? Like, a little choked up. You know you up. have to pay for it, but. Got a little choked up. Well. You've got money. Here's the thing. So they have to nominate you through the city, and you still, they still have to approve you, right? They approve you, but you pay for It's like for 35 that. grand, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I l- I look, I'd like to be on there one day, you know, just so yeah, but Asian bill, tourist can gosh. walk all over it and try to get to what uh, a Michael Jackson star. Yeah. What a conflicting bill that must be to get in the mail. Do you know what I'm saying? The, th- the 35 K. Yeah. yeah. For your he didn't star. Pay for it. He didn't pay for it. Who pays for it? I, I It was the network. The network pays for it. It's okay. good press for them. Okay. You know, I, if, who pays for like, if, is it the food network he's on by the way? Sorry to cut you yes, off. Yes. Food network. It he is. is food network. So I, I would, OG. exactly. Right. So I, I, I think, and this is a guess, you can correct me if I'm wrong because you're the master of that world. You're the, you're the only, uh, chef in that kitchen. I would, I would say that he put them on the map, right? Like he, he was the dude that was the first breakout hit for the food network. Well, if you talk to Bourdain. He ruined it. Oh, Bourdain and Malbec. He changed the network. I'll give him that. He changed it. And for some people feel like for the better and some people feel like for the worse. But what it just was it before? Food Network, it was... Serious? A little bit more serious. It was all cooking shows. So ah. there was no competition. There was no, you know, him driving around, small businesses. It was in... There was kitchens. It sure. was in New York. Yeah. And there was kitchens everywhere, and then just everyone had their show, right? Yes. Their set that was theirs. Yep. And that was it. And they taught you how to cook and, you know, elevated stuff, you know, easier to make stuff, whatever. It was all that. Right. And he kind of changed it. Well, he was on Food Network Star, so they were starting this Mm. competition. Yeah. He won, which is crazy. He's like a Kelly Clarkson, where you're like, oh, they won... American Idol, but how big can they really K Clarks get? Do you yeah. know what I mean? You're yeah. like you were in a competition and you like won on this little thing. Sure. How big can you get? You can get as big as Kelly Clarkson, and you oh. can get if you if you do it right, yeah. right? If you make the right decisions and stick with the people that took you to the dance, I think you can get pretty far. And so that's what he did. But he changed it into this kind of wow, like. <laughs> You oh, know, boing, boing, guys, boing. big bite, and it was it just changed the network, and I think it's more fun. Yes, yeah, so do I. I there's I, I a lot of it. people. The Bourdain side of me is like, uh, right. Look, I, I, I that guy for me started the Food Network because you know, let's face it, ladies love it, right? You yes. come in. We don't want to interrupt your shows. We'll, we'll be kind enough to let you finish, right? Sure. Um, and with Fieri on, I was like, oh. Oh, I'll watch this guy. Fuck. Right? That's a lot of bleach. Bleaching and beaching. Beaching dumps. Um, so let, let's face it. So you know the actor Michael McKeon? Yes. 
So he I'm has up, this show on there too. I'm think. up super late at night. No, he he does not. Um, I don't believe. Uh, he's he was he, Food on Breaking fact Bad or fiction Food or fact. not Breaking Bad the the spinoff Better Call Saul. Mm-hmm. He was obviously in Spinal Tap and you know a million things. He's Laverne and Shirley. He's old school OG, great actor. I don't really agree with his politics, obviously, but some um, okay. Uh, <laughs> What? Sorry. I didn't think in a million years I'd be responding to Michael McKean on Twitter. On Twitter, on Twitter. in a political Again, I'm up late last night. No, this had nothing to do with politics. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to find this tweet because it was it was really funny and like everybody everybody <laughs> commented on this. <laughs> so he posts, he shares this thing. Alan Arkin will be honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame on June seventh. Right? Right. Alan Arkin. Boring yes. ass Alan Arkin. But does, look, does he deserve it? You bet. You bet. You bet. But he's boring as shit or whatever. Sure. Right? Sure. So Michael McKeon shared it, and this was from Variety. It was a Variety article, and he says, Okay. Well, sure. Now that Guy Fieri has one, Alan should be next. And that was like, that was a dig. So it was a dig, but okay. I wrote, here's what I wrote back that, that blew up. And again, this was super late at night. Okay, you were feeling it. I did. Well, I, there's there's a lot of times I'll I'll tweet something like if I see something pisses me off, and then I'll go to, I'll just go to bed and forget about it, and then I wake sure. up in the morning, my phone's like on fire, everybody's laughing. Mm-hmm. So I just said, "Hey, man, Fury deserves it more. You try taking a shit at every diner, driving and dive in America, homeboy. Ask your kids if they want to go to Flavor Town tonight or Alan Arkin's house. <laughs> Guess who wins." <laughs> It's true. I don't know. Your kids, for sure. Oh, That's funny. boy. And, like, look, dude, Michael McKean's an OG. I, so this Spinal Tap is one of my favorite movies of all time. He he is a master in that world and uh, a great actor. Again, don't don't agree with his political things and what he said about Guy Fieri, but uh, it's true. Don't oh, come no. for Fieri. Don't come for Fieri, brother. Dude, he's got an army behind him, including us. Yeah, you're getting you're getting your feet real close to the flames there, <laughs> ombre. Flying close to the sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that'll yeah, happen. They- you, you want to talk about getting burned up? Uh, <laughs> a guy who lit, lit himself on fire at the White House yesterday. Uh, I love people who do shit like this. I do. Who was this? What is? We it? don't know. Okay. I, I don't know the guy's name, but uh, it was just it, Chip? It, it just this is breaking news. <laughs> yeah, Chip. Exactly. Could have been Chip. Our good buddy Chip, who does Burning Man, um, lit himself on fire at the White House. Secret Service, the Secret Service got there pretty quick to put him out. Right? Yeah. He said he died this morning. Um, oh. Resting. Nah, fuck that guy. I don't. If you light yourself on fire, you get your own shit going on, bro. Bra. Like whenever I see those fire protests of like. Hey, you know what I'm going to do to protest? I'm going to light myself on fire. That'll show everyone. It's like, nah, it shows everybody you're a fucking idiot, but. Dedicated to the cause. Congrats. Dura- yeah. You're a human Duraflame. Congrats, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Way to go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know why they tried God. to save him. I think if you light yourself on fire, they should just let it, let it burn. Isn't that the uh, Usher song? Let it burn. Let it burn. I could be way off on that, but uh, I don't even want to know. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I guess that I just oh, just burning. Alive. I know. Like, Why would you do that? I don't know. Why would you fucking you do that? You have problems. I know. You have problems. Why would you fucking do that? Um. But yeah, that, that's that's what it is. Do we know what the message was, or is it totally in vain? Uh, it, or did he it was, die? It was and climate did he change. Burn up in. in <laughs> In vain. Was, carbon footprint. He was protesting was climate change mm-hmm. that the planet was all going to burn up. He said he was the planet. I'm kidding. I have no idea. He what turned it, himself what it is. into carbon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we already are, but you don't know. Yeah. Whenever I, again, whenever I see shit like that, don't feel bad. I don't really have a, any emotion to it whatsoever. No, you know but what it's I, just I think people myself, are going fucking crazy. Man. Yeah, they are they are letting themselves really simulated world, simulated world. Boom, he called it my boy Riz. 
Riz. Riz Vert called it simulated world. I, that, that's something you would do in another world as your own character. Like, oh, man. You know, I'd really like to die in this video game. Just light myself on fire. Boom. Do it. Dead. God. That's hilarious. Uh, even more hilarious, though, by the way, is uh, Ashton Kutcher testifying in a murder trial is everything that I needed in this life. Why? Because he has a mustache that is, it's tiny, but it's perfectly groomed. When you see the picture of him, and he wore this suit to testify in this case on the stand. And when you see the picture of it, it looks like Ashton Kutcher is playing a guy. Yep. In a, like a in a lawyer show, like a Law a and Order show. I think it's a small corduroy too. <laughs> And and I want to make this perfectly clear to the audience. I I personally love Ashton Kutcher. Me too. Um, I got not hired as I, an actor. I got hired to write a as a person. Uh, as a person, not as an actor. Yes, as a person, but I, and as a businessman, he's really brilliant and never gets the credit he deserves. I wrote a script for him years ago. He was one of the most professional, nicest, smartest people I've I've worked with, and uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, so I don't I don't want to say that I'm making fun of this him. You know, as a person, because I actually love him. Um, he's great. But uh, <laughs> with his thing, <laughs> when this picture broke of him with the mustache, right? Right. And he's like pointing. It's all the things you see on like Law and Order, where it's just like, you know, the pictures yeah. are just epic. Just oh. epic. If you can cut one in, it would be the best. Um, I will do, but. So good. So here, here was the gist of it. Here's what happened, right? Because this was, and you'll like this, because this is like a real live crime corner. Yeah. Uh, if you don't know this story, 15 years ago, he went, he was picking, he was going to a girl's house to pick her up for like a first date. Knocked on the door. No one answered. Thought he just got stood up and went home. Turned out the girl was dead inside. Okay. She had been murdered. Okay. I was just like, oh, she was just an LA girl dead inside. <laughs> no, it's oh, terrible. Oh, but, but but it could be true. We don't know. We don't know. Either or, he, he, you know, he got contacted the next day of like, "Hey, man, this girl died. You were the, you were one of the last people there. Did you fucking kill it? You know, right? Uh, same as anybody else would have. Right? Forget that you're Ashton Kutcher at this what point. If he did, yeah. Go ahead. No, he. There's no way he did that. But anyways, uh, he had to. Fifteen years later, I guess. Uh, they're having, they're finally having a murder trial for this. And, uh, he has to testify that he got called to testify in the stand. 15 years later, must be an appeal or something. Is this the first trial? I don't, maybe they just got him. I, I like, I, I don't know. Maybe they just finally found the person. I remember this story vaguely back in the day, but it just kind of went away. Cause I don't, I don't know that anybody was caught or anything. So, Ooh. yeah. Could have been a cold case, James. But anyway, he, <laughs> he testified. And like, I love a cold case. If you think celebrities can't get out of shit like court wise, it's not true. Like we, we always have to fucking show up for this shit. You have to. It's um, the one thing that you can't. I mean, time suck. Your sentence might be uh, lowered or whatever because of celebrity, but you have to. I, even if you get go. called to testify or do depositions and all that other shit, and it's like ugh. jury duty, all this shit, all these things where you're just like, it's one one thing that your your money and your status cannot get you out of. Yeah, just, and, and Jesse. And again, like all these movies get sued so many times, and all the shit you do that. There ends up being so many lawyers in the room. And I had this conversation with a lawyer uh, maybe two days ago. There ends up being so many lawyers in all these rooms you're going into. You're like, man, are, are we in, like, is this a deposition? What are we doing here anymore? Like, what, right. what is this? Am I just answering questions? Are you just bringing in lawyers? People are fucking busting out weird NDAs and shit nowadays. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, who is this? Why? What? And and yeah. what what nobody really understands about all of it is, like, especially movies, there's like a thousand pieces of paper, you know, on a, on a big studio movie or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. If you sell your movie to like a gigantic studio, a thousand pieces of paper that you have to sign at the end, usually it's a college intern that, you know, is interning at your production company. For the summer. You're just sure. like, you sign on this shit and you forget about it. And then you get called like nine years later. Hey, so-and-so is getting sued. Do you have any of this? And I'm like, fuck no, dude. Yeah. I don't know where those goddamn people are, uh, but you can't get out of it. And you're just no. like, uh, it is what it is. Now, jury duty, on the other hand, you can totally get out of. Not a, not out of the, what do you, how? 
<laughs> I did this. Did you listen to the Robert Patrick interview? I think. Did you edit that one? Probably. The guy from Terminator? Oh, from, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, Bros? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, So uh, he went on this spiel on, that he loved jury duty. It was like the, the funnest thing of his life. And he loves getting called in. Um, he got called Look, in for a murder. if I had time, he yeah. In, that's what I said. But I was yeah. like, dude, you're Robert Patrick. You work all the time. You, what the fuck? How, how do you have time? And he goes, it's my civic duty as an American and I love it. And I love this part of the saying. law. And I'm like, You Great. can't get out of that part I just, all of, this of being time, I don't called. Care. You can't get out of like going to the initial, go to the, you know, courtroom and say, hey, I don't want to be here, but you can't, you can't, um, get out of that part. If you never got it in the mail, you mm, never got it in the gonna mail. People aren't going to like this answer. Ah, I'm just saying, Japes, uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of people who are busy in this world, you know, mm. I, you know, my, uh, my personal stance has been on this for for years is because sometimes they look, they get it wrong. Um, I'm not saying the OJ case because obviously he's still out there looking for the real killers. Right. But in other trials where you're like, oh man, they've gotten it wrong. Like the, mm-hmm. some of those ones you watch on Netflix, right? Mm-hmm. I think, and this is, this is me personally, I think this would help provide jobs to America. Um, if you could go to school for it, to be a professional juror, really study the law, really study uh, how to, you know, how in the, the intricacies of these cases, same as like a lawyer, right? Mm-hmm. And it's a high paid position. That way, when you go in, it's not some dipshit who's just sitting there with a sandwich. Just, you know, they might like the way somebody looks or not looks or whatever. Like, but that's the point. Professional the- jurors. No. Um, same as you have in like, wow, uh, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. It's not. No, it so, is. So you, you take sports, right? There's professional umpires in sports for a reason. You know what judge. you're going to get out of them. That's the judge. Ugh. So when you have, when you start to get into a professional, everybody's knows each other. They've been doing jury. They know the judge. The judge knows this person. You get into corruption. So the only thing that's taking away the corruption part of it is that jury box. Everyone else is in somebody's pocket somewhere, money somewhere, even the judge. So the only place that it's just like, Podunk, what do you think? Like, really, what do you think? You have no dog in the fight. You're getting paid $35 a day. No. You have no dog in the fight. What do you really think? That's the only way. To, that's, that's the reason that it's been this, the way that it has for this long. I don't think there's anything wrong with that part. I, there's the reason, though, that there's so many people in jail that shouldn't be in jail when they get cases wrong and all this other shit. I don't think there's so shits. many, by the way. I, no, no, but I, there's... I don't think there's so many people in jail that shouldn't be there. I think there is a couple. I think, I think me, me personally, again, professionals. And, and your judge comment is great for me, right? Because you don't know this. But in the NFL, there is like a line judge and a field judge. And then there's referees. So that judge is in charge of all those other people. And then they shift them out. Um, I, I think me personally, again, you have a bunch of people who study the law. They know it. And then you go in and they can make an informed, serious decision. And it's not left to this garbage like fucking Casey Anthony where it's just like, come on, man. I, I don't. I, Casey just, Anthony was that wasn't the jury. That was what they were going for and the case. So that was the lawyers and the judge. So what they presented, how they presented it, yeah, they they said she killed him. That's what they started out with. She killed her. Now you have to, as the jury, decide if it was on purpose or accident. Right. Either That's way, the only thing they were deciding. You hide a body in the woods and bury it and mm-hmm. keep it in a trunk and all that other shit. Send him away. Allegedly, we're good. Allegedly. No, no, we're not. I'm not going down that road. Not Ca- to me. Casey I'm Anthony's saying to to a, a jury. Dirt bag. But I just want a group of professionals. That's it. And then greats. Leave there's it up more, to them. There's more place for corruption when you do that. But I don't know. I, when you're you, dealing with people. Take jury selection. You're going on race. You're going on age you're going on income they ask you income questions Mm -hmm. uh i mean they're and both sides are trying to figure out who their best jury is going to be yeah and they have a certain amount get fucked i not not in this one uh like to me there's too many ways to exploit this system before it even begins again you can't you shouldn't be able to pick people on age and race and all that other shit like that's crazy if it was just 12 normal people right then for for that that the sake of that argument on on a but jury. if you're taking 
random if you just take 12 random people from a certain town. Now that I would agree with. But that's what they do. No, you have jury selection. So you go in yes, and there's a group of like 30 and then they bicker back and forth. Who they they're have gonna take. to though, because if they just took the 12, the first 12 that come into the door, yeah. then it could be an all black jury for a blah, 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 or an all white jury for this. People are people, man. So <laughs> yeah, it's just on this one. Really, really disagree with you. No, no. I People are people. No, I so. do disagree with no, you. No, I know, I know oh, you do. Oh, okay. But I'm saying so. people are people. And so if you want a trial of just people, mm-hmm. great. Just throw the first 12 in. We're all Americans, right? Fuck it. Okay. So if that's how, if that's how it was really going to be done, great. First 12 in, who do so you got? So if you were on trial for murder. Yes. I want a professional jury. You didn't do it. Yep. I want a professional jury. You... It's a perfect example. I want a professional jury who knows the law, knows the intricacies so of all of this shit. if any of those jurors know your lawyer? Uh, yeah, what, what do you mean? If there's any kind of weird corruption between the jury and the lawyer, they know each other, there's an automatic bias and anything like that, either your lawyer or the defense lawyer? I, I think bias will happen in any situation no matter what, and... I, I, again, I think, a but a, you don't want it to be based on the lawyer or anyone else in the courtroom. You want, if the biased, the biased, uh, solely to be against the defend the defendant. Right. Then, but again, th- this is where I go back to the Casey Anthony thing with, with, with Jose bias who won that case, right. Becomes massively famous. No matter what courtroom in America he walks in. I mean, he got Aaron Hernandez off of a double murder after that. Like, but that's what they what? try really hard what? to be like. You've never heard of this case, right? Just coming in totally blind. That's what they try and do. And that's what the in- interview process is as well. Have you ever heard of this person? Do you know anything about this trial? Have you read anything about it that could change your opinion? And the way that they select them is people that just don't know. And, and most of the time that means you live under a rock. And most of the time that means you're not super educated yeah but here's the problem jose baez rolls into court right right come on this is showbiz baby arms wide open everybody knows who he is that's bias already because you're like ah shit i know that dude same with johnny cochran back in the day you know r.i.p johnny cochran when johnny cochran was alive after the oj thing him uh shapiro all those guys they rolled into court that was it game over Sorry, we, we like they're, they're too famous that the jury is just there to see them. And, and jurors who have been interviewed after doing some of their trials, and they were just like, man, it was just awesome to see him. You know, mm-hmm. it's just great to see him. Right. That bias is going to happen no matter what. But if I'm on trial for murder that I did not commit, and I want to put it in the hands of 12 dipshits and you some weird thing that I don't. Everybody that is deciding professional. to be on a payroll. Yes. Someone's payroll. Pro- just a uh, professional. Okay. Just a professional. Okay. Jurors who who know the law and it's just like, all right, cool. Then, you know, you can get into facts or whatever. Like, uh, that, that's what I want in my life. It's not going to happen obviously, but, uh, I think that would provide not only a lot of jobs, but people were excited to be there. People weren't, you know, trying to get out of it or sleeping through it. Or, you know, a lot of people roll in. I, who was it? Don Cheadle who walked in was just like, nah, man, I, I it was a, a cop trial. He got called to jury duty and was mm-hmm. just like, I don't trust the police. Yeah, and that's, I mean, I was said, to get out of it. Like, come on, man. Yeah. So th- then that eliminates that as well. You're going to your job. Everybody's getting paid well. You're not, you're not leaving work because I think that's part of it too, right? Y- you, you have to leave your job and then tell your boss, hey, man, I got to go to jury duty and get 30 bucks a day. Mm-hmm. Great. Fuck off. That's, you're going to have to take it out of your time off. They don't give you time off your job for that. Um, so it, it fucks a lot of people, man. So if it was if it was professionals though, good, that is your job. You go into work every day, and you know, you went to school for it. You can use that degree, did all the shit, and it. That, I think you'd have a better shot at it. Otherwise, like in boxing or something, it'll all just be like four fans who are the judges. It'd be like, man, that guy could really get the shit. Well, kicked the out other of thing I think is there will be government employees, so there'll be people like. DMV workers, uh, you know what I mean? Like, think I don't of mind it. So, post office, like think uh, of anybody that is government employee. Uh, yep. And I'll, t- I'll tell you what the, 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 the issue is with that, right? 
DMV and postal workers, they're very concise and to the point. You might not like their attitude, <laughs> the mm-hmm. way they handle shit, but they're very concise and to the point. And, and like, I would say for the most part, they're pissed off because of their, the, the pay they're getting. And then the fucking weird ass people they get to deal with all day. Mm-hmm. Imagine if you put those those th- them DMV workers and uh, and postal workers in the jury box, like, and they had had some training on it. Great, concise to the point. No, yes, fuck off. Next, that's that's exactly what we need in there, James. Scary world. It's a scary world. If Ross Patterson was in charge, ah, uh, be great. Let's move on. It'd be great. Let's move on. Come on, James. I would be so scared to be in the courtroom that you are. Describing right now. Ah, uh, be great. I think totally, totally it's professionals. Right. That's all I want. Professionals, no, thank man. You. No, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I mean, you watch all that 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 court TV shit. You know, mm-hmm. jurors are sleeping. Like people are, you know, hard to keep them awake. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of them are reading books and shit, and you're just like, come on, man. Mm. Get your head in the game. Be a professional. Be a professional juror. I think that's the I think that's the wave of the future, Jabes. I think that is, man. I don't want to say the the astronaut ice cream, but uh, I think that's that's what it is. You know, it's the wave of the future, astronaut ice cream. Scary world. Professional jurors. Scary world. You know what is it? Ross Patterson's in charge. Scary Jabes is our sponsors. We just keep going. We just keep going every day, and uh, whatever happens, happens. We we go with God. G O G. Nope. G W G. Go with who? I'm on fire today. Gog? Yeah. Go with Gog. Okay. <laughs> We're going to go with Gog on this one. G-O-G. Follow Gog. Follow Gog on this one. Kids, uh, go with Gog. Follow BlackRifleCoffee.com. Uh, for the latest and greatest, you're drinking some right now. Yeah. I am. You feel real sprightly. Who, who got you that mug? Dan. Did he really? Yes. That's fu- that's awesome. That's really I funny. I know. My f- <laughs> my friend Anthony got that's it great. for me for Mother's Day. Did he really? That's awesome. Yes. That's really thoughtful actually. That's pretty Well, funny. it just got sent to the mail no 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 nothing no saying who it was from and I was like Okay, I thought it was my mom. <laughs> because it's like Trump, she, you know, and I she thought would never get you that. Yeah, but I thought it was kind of making fun of it. Him? Uh, Do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, I was like yeah. maybe it was her cuz she's yeah. Well, not look, a fan. Either way. You not a, a fan. And that's okay. And she is entitled to that. Yeah. Right? Everybody's entitled to do whatever they want. I'm not going to rile anybody up. No. But anyway. So, uh, you yes. got a little black rifle in that cup. I have a lot of black rifle. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. These have been long days, long nights. Uh, somebody, so we, we, we opened up the new studios, created a media company. Um, so we're going to be combi- combining uh, Drinking Bros podcast uh, video and uh, uh, Ross Patterson Revolution on YouTube. So subscribe. Audio feed is going to be the same. Audio feed will be the same, obviously. Uh, videos will just be in one. Um, and we're, we're hoping to bring on a couple more shows and and create a whole podcast family for a bunch of people. And James has been hard at work in the studio. You've been drinking a lot of BRCC in there. Someone wrote in on the new set on Drinking Bros and said that your stained wood looks amazing. Tell Jesse she did a great job. Thank you, guys. Yeah. So uh, we'll, we'll be moving this in, into... So that portion of the studio is done. The other half will be completed next week. Mm-hmm. So we'll be moving into there next week. And uh, you did a, a fantastic job. Black I really Rifle liked Coffee. your guys' studio. I did too. It's great. Uh, Black Rifle Coffee got you, got you through those long, long days and nights, Jabes. And continues to do so. Go to BlackRifleCoffee.com. Type in the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. Get the subscription of the month. That's what we, we have. And we usually drink out of it, I feel like. Uh, next up, we've got GhostBed.com forward Ooh. slash Drinking Bros. Ooh. Sleep so good, it's scary. It is scary. Um, once again, we are doing big, big things with them. Uh, in June, first of June, uh, next week. So we have a big we, we, announcement. We have a big, announcement we have a big thing. We have a big thing, uh, and they've they've got a big thing right now. Memorial Day sale is still going on. I'm on their website right now. These guys just keep it going, man. Like they keep these specials going for like two weeks. 
They kind of like there's always something going on. So anytime you go, there's going to be, I mean, always 15% off, right, for military first responders. Correct. So you can have that. Yep. Um, our promo code is always around. And then they always have some kind of sale piggybacking on the other one. They've always got some kind of deal going on, no? Yeah. And again, since we're all we're all combined, and this is where we were heading, and, and you know, some people asked why it was ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros is, you know, same page. We're all doing, you know, shows and everything. You're gonna be joining fake news uh tomorrow, which is great. Uh that'll be fun. And uh hundred dollars off ghost bed for like regular people two hundred dollars off the ghost bed lux and uh two hundred dollars off the ghost bed flex and that flex is if uh let's say you're a larger person mm-hmm. boom i don't I, you can fit they said you can fit over uh the 600 pounds on there oh like that man like that show they have on that uh the 600 pound my 600 pound life that's it you can fit two of those people they said two of those people on a ghost bed flex yep I, we don't fact check, but I think that's what they said. Uh, all of these, they used to come with free pillows. Now they're coming with free sheets. And dude, 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 the sheets are the fucking best. The sheets are the best. We have the sheets. When I say, I mean, okay, so there's a thick um, elastic. So you know how most sheets is just like this thin kind of elastic thing or whatever. It is a thick band yeah. all around the whole sheet. When I say, I mean, amazing tightness every time. Yeah. I've never seen you happier in this world than when you got those oh sheets. Because uh, usually they're just like on the little corner. I mean, this band is all the way around. It's yeah. just quality. 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 Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Big things are popping off with them next week. Uh, next up, we got strikeforceenergy.com. <laughs> Shibloinkers. Shibloinkers. Uh, a lemon, a ridge, a grape, orange. 10 pack, 40 pack, 750 milliliter bottle. No carbs, no sugars. No problem. No shirt, no shoes. No problem. Hashtag Summer Swayze. Uh, go, go get those Summer Swayze t shirts. Everybody's buying those fucking things online. I like them. I know they blew up. Uh, they blew up. Go to ledbyiron.com for those. Strikeforceenergy.com. For all your energy needs, um, that'll these these are those are the Memorial Day drinks. We're drinking those fuckers all all weekend, just popping those in. Kick the can; you don't need it anymore. You go to StrikeForceEnergy.com. Promo code Revolution twenty percent off. Last but not least, this is what you came for, Jabes. This is what the people pay for. StraightRazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut, smooth. Ooh. Are you right? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, God, I had to shake that out of my head. Um, shake that out of my headphones. Oh, I'm getting more and more angry messages sure. about it. Oh, are you really? <laughs> yeah, it's not so much fun, I think, anymore for people. So we'll uh, we'll think about it, you know? Maybe oh, take a poll. Boy. I mean, I don't want to piss people off. I don't want them to be crashing into the, you know, into sure. things or sure, sure, sure. It's been getting co- in trouble at work or anything like this. So I don't want those things. It's been compared to uh, Kawhi Leonard's laugh, who's playing tonight. <laughs> oh, no, I don't want that. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. People love it. Uh, StraightRazors.com is everything you need to be a real man in this life. Straight razors. If you're worried about using a straight razor, you can use a safety razor. Get a kit for Father's Day. Get your father a kit for Father's Day. Um, everybody's getting these things. Look, the Smolder Aftershave is the jam. They got uh, beard oils, mustache waxes, shampoos, conditioners. That Smolder is what you need. Get a bottle of the Smolder. If I'm wrong, you can punch me right in the dick. Go to straightrazors.com. Promo code REVOLUTION. 20% off. That's a big savings right there. Ooh. Ooh. And then buy uh, my new book. Um, it's, I wrote it with my beef fry. Uh, Matt Best, thank you for my service. It is on pre-order at Amazon.com right now. And no, Amazon's not going to fuck with it. It's, uh, it's a military biography. They would never. That would generate fucking mass chaos, I think. Um, boy, could you imagine if they started throwing veterans off of, uh, off of Amazon? Well, Fuck. there's zero, zero Harriet Tubman's on the, on the cover. On the cover. So uh, we should be should, fine. Eh, there should be more. Want to get into Moby, James? Now, what is going on with this? This is the this is a weird story. Um, and still, by the way, when that album comes on, play. Yes, I go through the whole thing front to the back. The trans. 100%. I mean, there is. It's the closest that I can 
that that you can get to a time machine. I mean, I am transported. Are you not? Yeah, Where you're yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. holy shit. All a, the songs up. are great. And like, I don't. And then B, it's so, it, it's just, you can, really you good. can see and feel and smell that time in your life. That it's stink. crazy. Yeah. That stink of the rave floor. Yeah. That stench. You can really get it in your body. Um, I can, Anyways, I can feel the molly pump in my veins. What's going on with, with little Moby these days? So there's been two like crazy stories this week about like celebrities lying. Right, where you're just like, but they're, but they're so no, but these are so odd that you're like, why would you make that up, like that specifically? Okay. So Moby's got a book that's coming out, and uh, he's on this book tour. One of the stories he tells about when he got famous was dating Natalie Portman. She was like 18 or 19 years old. Okay, Natalie Portman's like, hey man, uh, and they, and he put like a there's a picture of him and Natalie Portman that he posted together, like. Hugging and he's got like this huge like shitting and grin on his face. Okay. Natalie Portman comes out. And she's like, "Hey man, I just thought you were super old and creepy." Because let's face it, Moby's always looked fifty. Always, his, he's his always been life. fifty. Yeah, he could have been twenty two and just looked fifty mm-hmm. and been bald. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But she was like, "Hey man, you were like a creepy older dude. Like I, we never dated. I don't know where this came from. So it'd be nice if you could stop lying about whatever this is, right?" You don't really know who to believe in this. Yeah. And then I, Moby sure. comes out mm-hmm. and issues an apology. So apparently he that didn't happen. He's selling a book and then he has to cancel all of his events. Uh, because the outrage of it of like, hey man, you're a weird little fucking liar. And so and that last is night Is he though, or is he being respectful of what she wants to be out there? No. So last night he posts and he just said I just want to go away from the world for a little while. Like, I just want to go away. Because, I, no, I think it's, it, the, the exact quote was, I just think it's best if I go away for a long time. Jeez. <laughs> um, now, we don't Classic need to, Moby. Moby, calm down. No. Calm down. Um, okay. So, that, that. This is strange to me. Yeah, super weird. But I, I guess it's true. Otherwise, you'd be like, no, fuck you. We dated. And, you it know. could be true or it could be the kind of thing where you're just like, this world sucks. Like, yeah, we dated. We went on a couple dates. If she doesn't want that out there in this era, I've got to I've got to respect that. But if what you... is he going to who? How is that going to look for him? If he's like, yeah, we fucking dated Natalie Portman. Talk about me, too. Uh, Do you know what I'm saying? Like, he know. has to say, sorry, guess we didn't date, right? I don't know. I, I, I don't know what the deal... Moby's a weird guy. Like, that's... So is Natalie Portman, by the way. Yeah, 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 for sure. So... And, and not that I'm... But Natalie Portman seems like the, the type, regarding something like this, wouldn't give a fuck. Like, I'm sure she's dated a million famous people. Who, who cares? Yeah. So if it really didn't happen... Why come out and say anything? Like you know, there was a uh, another t- two other fucking. Uh, actually, I'm gonna get into this. Chris I just Ka- don't know what This Chris with Kattan the woman. thing I read last night, man. It was super late, and I was up super late last night. It's Chris Kattan thing uh, last night. Uh, Chris Kattan wrote a book as well from Saturday Night Live, right? Okay. He was Night at the Roxbury. You oh know, yes, we you, know. You know Chris the, the Apple yes, fucking. Yes. That's all I remember is the. The Mr. Peepers. That's it. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's who I really remember Chris Kattan is, right? So he wrote a book as well. And he talks about uh, getting Me Too'd in it, sort of, where he claims that Lauren Michaels, uh, the, the director was supposed to be, the, the producer that was attached was Amy Heckerling, who did like Clueless and all that other shit. Mm-hmm. And she was possibly going to direct this movie and I guess had made a, according to his book and had, had made a fucking advance toward him and said, I want to fuck you in this office. And it was like Lauren Michaels office and on the desk or whatever. And it was, what's her name? Yes. Okay. And so he said, he called, you know, or he said, no, I don't want to do this or whatever, blah, blah, blah. I guess she, she had called Lauren Michaels or something, or something, whatever happened behind the scenes. And I guess Lauren Michaels called Chris Kattan. And this is the story in the book. And he just mm-hmm. said, hey, I'm not saying you don't have to, but it would be great if you could just fuck her and get it over with. Something to that effect. Right? Okay. Um, Gosh, I miss, the, I miss the good old days. Same. And let's face it. <laughs> like, I read this story and 
Oh, I miss the good if you, old days. If you think we're we're on one side and not the other, it's it's not true on most of this shit. So you take no. you take this for example, right? You're Chris Kattan. You're I've I've met Chris Kattan in real life. I've seen what Chris Kattan looks like in real life. He's weird lucky, guy, weird looking guy. Look, but Re- back really in the day, small. But here's the thing: if Amy Hackerling wants to fuck you, right? What do you give a shit for? What do you give a shit like? Look, Lauren, Lauren Michaels, if, if you're out there, and I'm sure you're listening every single day. I will allow it, and he will. I agree with you. He should have fucked her and just moved on with his life. Oh, like, I thought you were going to say. No. I'll fuck her. You got something <laughs> for me? And I was going to I was gonna hey, co-sign on that. Remember yeah. those eight years he made me audition for <laughs> SNL and then told me I didn't get it after eight if years? If all I had to do was, was fuck, fuck Amy Heckerling, I would have done it fucking twice. Three times. I'm buying a flight tomorrow. Yeah, on your desk. See what we can do. Inside your mini fridge, wherever. Wherever. Um, <laughs> so when I read that, I was like, dude, are you really going to write about it? So he, he comes back and says later he ends up fucking her. And, um, you know. Uh, Lauren Michaels denied it. They had to release a statement. Her office didn't say anything about it. Um, either way, man, Chris Kattan, dude, you're lucky anyone is boning you. Anyone. Right. Like, let alone a powerful female director, which at the time, it was only a handful of them, right? Right. Fuck! Come on, brother! Sure. His career when it went b- berserkers. Dude, you, you should have dated her. Uh, and then he said it put a you know strain on whatever his fucking relationship was at the time. And it's like, who fucking cares, bro? Who cares? Because he wasn't married. It's like, man, power up. Power up is what you should have done. Yeah. Again, I miss, I miss the simplicity of the good old days. Yeah. You, know? you either do it or you don't. Nobody's but saying you anything. Don't, but if you don't, Chris you're not going to get the job. Yeah. And that's just it. So what happened was, and they were worried that the, the movie wasn't going to get made now hmm. because it was on thin ice. It, look, it, Night of the Roxbury was a very thin premise to begin with. and <laughs> I liked it. I, I, I did too. But SNL gets the back end royalties to that, right? right? So Lauren Michaels, yeah, absolutely. Make the fucking movie and get on with your life because yeah. we're making money off this shit, Holmes. Not only that, but you're a lead in a movie off of a very thin premise. That's one of those premises that's so thin that... If one person, like an Amy Hackerling or, or somebody at the studio is just like, oh, is he difficult? Fuck it. Just bury this project. Mm-hmm. It could have happened like that for something that thin. You know, it's not like you're throwing Forrest Gump away for Christ's sakes. You're throwing Night at the Roxbury away. You don't give a shit at the studio, right? Right. So I understand all sides to that. The only person side I don't understand is Chris Kattan, man. And what I really don't understand is this many years later. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're... What was that? When did that movie come out? 2002? Three? One? I don't, yeah, I don't even know. Yeah. Like, shit. There's no way to 20 find years out. ago, yeah. and now you want to write a book about how, oh, man, you were forced to do it? I might just send her a tweet and just out into the public and say, hey, Amy, I just read about the Chris Kattan thing. Know that I would have boned you and been happy about it and moved on with my day. And we would have had a, a better shoot. She didn't end up directing that movie, by the way. A huh. dude came in. She she got a producer credit, but uh, they're not they're not saying whether or not it was because of that incident or whatever. But right, come on, bro, you're Chris Kattan. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll run that tweet that you were gonna that you're talking about <laughs> through uh, HR. We'll see if that's gonna be the best thing for us right now as a company. I just uh, hashtag we stand by Amy. You know. Um, that's, Hashtag that's all. we don't always side with the woman, <laughs> but sometimes, sometimes we do. We do. Um, <laughs> sometimes we do. Uh, <laughs> and in the like, by the way, so the other weird celebrity story that I was I was talking about about somebody lying. This was even weirder. Was uh, the the guy from the Lakers, Rob Palenka, who's Magic Johnson just quit in public and nobody knew what was going to happen. And so his partner, his little POC, partner in crime, again, really off with the initials. That's P-I-C, partner mm-hmm. in crime. There we what go. What did you first say? Gog, um, initially, and then P-O-C. Oh, P-O-C. Um, I believe that's person of color now is what they're calling <laughs> Yeah, dead serious. I think that's what, I think oh, that's what they're calling okay, it. Okay, like so on, P-I-C, uh, yep. Uh, his partner in crime, they... 
Magic Johnson comes out and says, hey, man, I got backstabbed by this guy and he did all this other shit and blah, blah, blah. And, and uh, he told this story about um, Kobe, Kobe Bryant. And I was like, man, this story can't be true. And then they had they video of it. So Rob Palenka is now managing the Lakers. He's in charge of player personnel and all that other shit, right? Powerful position of arguably the most powerful franchise in the NBA. He's talking to the players, and they have this video clip of him. And he was like, you know, you know what Kobe Bryant used to do? Kobe Bryant was like, we'd find the best of the best and seek them out and hunt them down and go and talk to them about their craft, right? And I've always talked about that. So I've, I'd love yeah. to do that, right? And he goes... That you take uh, the the Dark Knight with the Joker, Heath Ledger is the Joker. He goes, do you know after that movie came out, Kobe called me and said, "I want to have dinner with Heath Ledger. I just want to I want to know what he did to get lock into that character. Mm-hmm. I want to know what he did." And so Kobe had dinner with Heath Ledger, and that's what you guys need to do. You know, mm-hmm. do sh- shit like Kobe. Right? Mm-hmm. Big problem with that. Uh, Heath Ledger died way before the Dark Knight came out. Um, almost a year before that. So, uh, <laughs> there's no way they would have had dinner together, um, uh, on any planet. Right. <laughs> so that would have been a little tough. That would have been a little you tough. Were teasing it out a lot before, but yeah. Who? That Batman with him. Y- yeah. Did he die during filming? What's that? Did he die during? No, he, di- he died after. And it was just like, they had no footage of that. Oh, okay. Simply because they, you know, they keep that shit under lock and key yeah. or whatever. And it was just like, yeah, no, right. When he saw it in the theaters, mm, he called mm, up Heath Ledger mm, and said, I mm. want to fuck it. And I was like, whoa, whoopsie. Ding uh, victimless dong. crime. Yeah. Well. Find me the victim of telling that story. <laughs> it's weird. It's weird, but it's victimless. It's a weird story, man. It's a it's weird, weird story. Look, it's weird. But yeah. again. And and then when you're it's up, not hurting anybody. When you're up late at night, because like surprisingly, we we write like you know bullet points and shit for the show and uh, and all that stuff. Like I'm I'm looking for weird stories. Um, sometimes you roll through things that you're like, oh my god, I'm up this late at night, and any video could trigger me to just break down in tears at any moment because you feel like you've gotten to the end of the internet. Oh, and one did last night. Okay. And when I say trigger me to tears of like, you ever catch something super sad, you know, and you're by yourself, it's late, you're crying at something and you're just like, what the fuck? Every, every day. (laughs) Every day I get emotional about something, whether it's like I said, like the military dad's coming back yeah, yeah, yeah. or I'll catch something. Exactly what I'm talking about. One time a day, probably. Mm -hmm. Exactly what I'm talking about. Tears. So, uh, last night, tired late towards the end the blind guy on america's got talent Mm -hmm. that that clip rolled through yes the current thing rolled Mm -hmm. through where the blind autistic guy gets on stage with his mom and then sits behind the piano and just crushes and i mean the judges are crying the people in the audience are crying i that's when i was just like i've had enough internet tonight (laughs) I'm crying. I'm going. I'm going to bed tonight. We're all done with this. Um, Is that why you were sobbing coming to bed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, like, okay. Kind of, there was something woke in my eyes. Woke me up a little eyes. bit, but yep. I thought uh, I'll find out what's wrong tomorrow. There was a fan that was really windy in my eye holes. Yeah, and, and you uh, just kind of dried them out. And yeah, then it, that's yeah. all. That's all there is. But uh, that guy got me. That guy got me. And I, I was love like, that. Nah. So do I. What is it about the America's Got Talent? So your mom loves that show. Yes, but she watches, she doesn't watch the actual show. She watches this thing on YouTube, which is just the winners. You, and it's this, it's such an uplifting uh, compilation. Yeah. Where it's just one right after the other of yeah. these people that are blind or disabled or whatever that come out and they get like the golden button and they're yeah. just like so happy. So it's just. It's, it's endless happiness. And there is a, a large subgroup that only watches those videos did you know that i mean there's enough of them on there i mean when she puts it on it's one right after after the other and i didn't understand why and then uh there was a a thing that popped up that said that there's a subgroup of people who just watch those videos on youtube all day and they they have millions and millions of views and i was like oh shit that's why yeah Uh, now i understand why 
But I just, when I was watching it too, I go, oh God. And then I like got sucked, sucked in a little bit when she was watching it. Yeah. And it's just like one uplifting tale after the other and one like person winning what they want to win the most in life. Right. Just clip after clip of that. And you really are like, yeah. Yeah. Like, let's do it. I want the golden button in life. What do I got to do today? To get it. And you walk out the door and that all goes away because life, you know, hits you in the face. Sure. But, but when you open the door to when your you car, open the door, or the front door, to, to walk out and fucking sure. punch the mountain lion of the right? world in the face. And just go, gosh. I want the golden button. If this little fucker yeah. can do it, why can't I? You stop complaining about stuff for a little bit. It, little, it all comes back. It all comes back. But. For a little bit. And uh, speaking of that, you know, there's a golden button going on right now in the world. Everybody keeps talking about Powerball. Uh, it's, up, it's up over $450 million. Don't forget these two. You know, your faves. If you're out there listening and you're, you're and a you diehard. Win. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you win, just throw us 10. That's all we're asking for. No big. No bigs. And we'll keep doing the show. If not, well, we'll still keep doing the show. But <laughs> So do we want to keep on this, ly- this lying um, kind of path with the yeah. Instagram? Let's do it. Did you, yeah, you saw that. You saw that story with the Instagram chick. Yeah, and super fascinating. I, I thought. loved it. I did too. And, and I, this was lying for the right reason. Where, but very meta because in the lie became the thing that everyone does anyway. Yeah. Right? So, do, do you want to tell tell the audience what it so is? So the idea is this: uh, Amalia Olman is her name, and she is an Argentinian uh, artist, and she basically. Right around two, 2014, 15, mm-hmm. started this Instagram fake story of herself, basically, but totally making it seem real. So posting about a breakup, posting about all these different escapades that she would do in life, yeah. um, saying that she was a model or an aspiring you know, actress in LA, all these things that everybody does anyway. And the, and the breakup caused her to, to change her life, right? Go to she, yoga, right. start eating healthier. So, but she chronicles this whole journey in Instagram as you do. Yeah. Not me, but other people. Everybody. It's the whole thing. It's Instagram. It's Instagram. So she would like, uh, she, talking about, yeah, joining yoga, um, escorting just made the story yeah. she would do crying videos in front of you know in front of mirror and things like this weird selfies and yeah. you just think that you're following this person's story and once she hit ninety thousand followers she revealed that it was all fake right and it was all an art piece and people got were outraged oh yeah um what is different about what she's doing than any other influencer fake model person nothing nothing and and look we've interviewed nothing. a bunch of these people um in in you know we're close to 800 shows now combined between this and drinking bros we've met all these people in real life for talk to them and whatever and like we've seen behind the curtain e- either either via interviews yeah. or parties that we've gone to we are just like all of it's orchestrated orchestrated yeah and, um, and, and a lot of times they're asking you to video or to do things and you're just like oh all right cool uh, so, there was a there was a meeting that we I, I went to um where we were trying to get a guest we did get the guest i'm not going to say who it was but they were like this oh yeah come by we're just we'll be at the office it's a normal thing and they had a dj there and it was blocked out for an hour with like this small party that it appeared to be but like they encouraged people to film it and whatever it was like it was like 20 people but like 18 of them work there and it was like, oh, hey, this is our office all the time and like party and show what this is like and, and whatever. And then as soon as like six it, cut off, boom, everything shut up, closed the doors and we went to dinner and it was just like, wait, what the fuck do we? Yeah. I did not think that I was going to this or whatever. And it was like, but you got video, right? You, you took it, you put it on your thing and whatever. And it was like, yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess, but like, what? What are we doing? And people do that all the time. Yeah. And she time. made this into an art piece called excellences and perfections and it's and she wrote a book about it and everything and um i think it was it's a good comment 
on, on on how you can create a whole life that is not yours yes. through Instagram pictures 100%. and that everyone, most of the people that you follow are doing that. They're creating it. Yeah. And I've gotten a little peek behind that corner with certain people and the curtain with certain people. And, yeah. uh, yeah. It's crazy, it's right? It's all fake. It's, it's all, it's all fake. It's crazy, dude. It's all fake. And a lot of the, it's, you know, it's, it's usually the self-help people that I find me, me personally, like that, that where it's just like, oh, you got to run or work out or aspire to this and, and posting inspirational quotes. And then you meet them in real life and you're like, man, you're miserable. You're, you're not doing any of the things you're talking mm-hmm. about. Um, and you know, I have friends like that from college. Th- things like that that I follow, and I'm just like a couple of them who were posting shit like that. And I was like, man, you're, I just saw you, bro, like fucking two months ago. You were miserable. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, uh, to each their own, I guess. And if you can create Again, a, a story. Yeah. yeah victimless if you, crime. If you can create a story like this in a business and a company and all that shit, I, who's going to say otherwise? However, anybody has to make money in this world. I get it. So I'm not going to shit on it. Um, there's professions and things that I would prefer not to do. Um, but... To each his own. I think this girl's story was rad because it was just, I mean, she did a hard cut and just said, fuck you guys. This is what, who I really uh, am. And it was great. I love that Same. because again, victimless crime, but it really showed, I'm sure her followers like, Hey, or it can, or it can help people with this weird social, you know, this the thing that they're saying is it's giving people, you know, depression and all of this to look at everyone's perfect life right and this story can show you that it's not like that no and uh promise i promise the the hilarious thing is she's argentinian but she looks white and she was putting like and she was in la or saying she was in la and she might have gone a couple times and stacked photos and stuff who knows but she was eating avocado toast and like posting pictures of that can you explain to me what the fascination is with white women and avocado toast and what it is? What Are they it is? putting avocado on toast? Or is yeah, it a- so it's a spread. They're making avocado into a spread, and then you can put any kind of seasoning you want on that avocado spread. Isn't that a lot of carbs? It's just the bread. Not the avocado? No, avocado doesn't have any carbs. Really? It's fat, and it's all good fats. So basically, it's the perfect kind of... Snack. combination snack after workout <laughs> before y'all go so you have your carbon especially if you get a good bread like an ezekiel joe rogan you know what i'm talking about yeah um listener big listener of the show yeah messages yeah. me constantly sure so if you get like an ezekiel bread grain then you put the avocado on it has the creamy texture of anything that you would want creamy uh, okay. butter things like this but yeah. not that um, and it just has packed with nutrients and good fats and carb. And if you just eat that now for the problem with me is I'll eat five pieces of it. Yeah. What do you, and then you've gone to the point of, you know, you're too many carbs. Now you have right, 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 too right, right, much right. fats, whatever. But if you just need a little fuel, pick me up, um, in the morning or afternoon, it's the perfect kind of. Gotcha. I, I, I was always curious about that. I was it's ca- not great, but all right. You just see so many fucking white women posting it, where I'm just like, why? Oh are you well, posting we are sheep. Toast? We are sheep. I don't <laughs> love it, but I'll say I do. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm supposed to. I'm supposed to. It's kind of like sushi. Yeah. Sushi, I think, is a joke that's being played on me. Really? Oh yes, I think it's a bit I that somebody it. started a long time ago, I and we've sushi. just been going along with it. It's insane to me. When people say that they're craving the raw fish on top of the mm-hmm. little rice, I honestly, I, I go into sim world mode where I go, this is someone that is fucking with me. This is one of those things that just have never died and everyone kind of goes along with it. Like, yep, it's awesome. I'm craving it too. I do not get it. We are button heads like two young bucks today out in the forest. I what love sushi. Is it? I love it. What is that? That raw fishy. What uh, is that? I, I just en- I enjoy the whole thing. I, I the the wasabi. I love the the wasabi, the soy sauce, the whole. Okay, so all the those shit. I get. It tastes fresh. So you could put that on anything. Just it it, it just uh, there's a level of freshness to me where I'm like, man, 
Uh, I enjoy it. I enjoy the shit out of it. I really do. Ooh. And to me. Oysters. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, I just, I honest, it's just a joke. Yeah. It's a joke being played on me. I, I, I love I it. I am the butt of the I love joke it. And you know, every day. time I go to LA, I go to, what is it? Izzy Kai on third. That's mm-hmm. my end all be all jam. If I don't go there once when I'm in Los Angeles, I, I will kill someone. Sure. I love it so very, very much. They're baked crab hand roll. And by the way, for anybody out there, I've turned a bunch of people onto it. It's just like, that's the greatest, that's the greatest menu item ever served in this life. And I agree. Agree. I do. I love sushi. Sorry. Um, something I, I used to love that I don't love anymore. Uh, I bitched about this maybe a hundred episodes ago, right? I just said, I I'd said to the listeners, I was like, look, man, I, when I go into the gym, I'm pissed off that I have to have my phone on me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people are like, a bunch of people wrote in afterwards because I was like, I just want to listen to music and I don't want to be bothered with text or emails or mm-hmm. all that shit. And they were like, put it on airplane mode. Um, oh, nice. That's the, that was the, the cheat code, right? And I was like, oh, all right, awesome. Um, but then I did it and I became, once we had, a, you know, the new child, the new mm-hmm. baby, I became paranoid that something would happen. And then I'm the asshole in airplane mode that's like, can't answer a text where it's just like really your workouts are that intense fucking Conor McGregor that you you know you can't get a text that your son we have to go to the hospital from an outbreak of peanut butter where you know some weird fucking thing whatever whatever is going to happen down the road he doesn't have a peanut allergy by the way no he does not but you you know what I'm saying right where a friend of ours had said the same thing of the the kid's throat was closing up because of some weird allergy or whatever so it is possible right um with that, I, I stopped turning it on airplane mode and I just ex- accept the fact that I'm going to get a thousand calls and texts and emails and shit. And I just kind of put it on silent and then choose to answer what I want to answer, not answer. iPod is back. They have it. Apple is releasing a new iPod. It looks identical to the phone. Identical to the phone. So what are we doing? I don't know. And like, I, I, if you go and look it up, because there were some people who wrote in, they were like, dude, the iPod's back. And I was like, awesome. What is it going to be? Look, like? oh, it looks exactly like the phone, but it, you can't talk on it. So why do I need two of those? For that reason, I guess. Or they're trying to filter out, like I said, the last remaining 60-year-old, 50-year-olds at this point that are still yes, like, I man. need my iPad, I, I, I'm yeah. my iPod. I couldn't, I, I can't figure it out because you're going to sell two of those things. Uh, well, we, we'll eat our words maybe, but yeah. No, I, with, with Apple Music, and it's their own creation, by the way, to, to, to me. Like, they're, they're a product of their own success. With Apple Music, it's on your phone. Now, what am I, you're just going to get a separate device to play Apple Music on Something that isn't my phone and I can't do the rest of my shit. Like, no, no, I'm not going to do that. If it was a different shape or like, remember when they had those tiny squares? It was like, it would hook on your sleeve and it was an iPod mini and you could just, you know, shuffle up and deal 500 songs or whatever it was. It was about, I don't know, a third of the size of an Apple remote. It was like this big and that thin. And you were just like, oh, oh, yeah. And that was a that was a thing for a while, and it just clipped on your sleeve. Okay. And then you could listen to you know five hundred songs or whatever. It was All like, right. No, I, I'm not plugging in for five hundred songs, dude. No. I can't. I can't no. do that shit. Um. But so when I saw this, I was like, oh, maybe it's gonna be like that. No, it's just it's just the size of a phone, and that's it. So get fucked, Apple. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doing it. I do a lot of your shit. Um. You know, I st- I stand by Max. Stand by the iPhones, even though, you know, the new one's a piece of shit. But, yeah. uh, you know, I'll, I'll rock with you. I still fuck with Apple. You a crime corner, mm-hmm. Jabes? You don't have one today. Uh, why? Because the crime was solved and we've, we've posted it. We, post, we had a real crime corner this week. So we posted it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's done. Yeah. So everybody out there was like, hey, man, you guys don't have a crime corner this week. That's why. We had, we had a real life criminal, and the reason why I'm getting into this today is all we told this story what last episode or two episodes ago. Last episode. Last episode. People at, like we love the listeners, and again, all 1.6 million of you, we love you. Um, they sent in articles. They found an, an article of the guy and how he got caught and everything. Because I didn't want to text back and forth with the detective. I don't want to bother him. I'm sure he's got his own shit to deal with, mm-hmm. right? I don't want to get into that whole sitch. 
I was grateful. I sent a grateful text back and then, and then that was the end of it. Our listeners found the article where this guy was caught in and I, cause I didn't know how he was caught. Right. This is the real life crime corner for, for this to put a button on this whole story. Uh, obviously, if you didn't listen to the last episode, we got robbed, smash and grab uh, crowbar through the passenger side window. This guy did it to 17 cars in this bunch of neighborhoods, right? Uh, ours was, was one of them. It turns out, and I, and again, the listeners send this in, not the cops. It turns out the guy on one of the, the vehicles, it smashed it open. His wallet fell out on the ground next to a car, had his ID, had everything. Boom. Got the guy. And, and it was simple. Here's the weirdest the part about this, right? And this is again, why I wanted to come on here and talk about this was in LA, this exact same thing, same happened. thing happened, but here's the thing. It was in the passenger seat because, like, my OnStar went off, you know? Yeah. And, it, it, like, this fucking – all this information, like a ticket he was supposed to go to court for was in the passenger seat. And the LAPD was just like, sorry, we don't have time for this shit, man. Yeah. And I was like, you know who the guy is. Yeah. We know who the yeah. guy is. Just yeah. go find this guy. No. Yeah. We don't have really have time for that today. I was like, what, what do you yeah. – And I said, what do, you, what do you have time for today? Murders. And they go, if it's not drugs and murders, man, we're, we, we're not doing anything. And I was like, at least they were honest about it. Hey, I, was like, All right, I like that. Fuck it. Yeah, same. But with this, so easy. And they, no wonder the guy caught him in 12 hours. Like, they found him fucking 12 hours later. It was great. Yeah. Great. Do your fucking job. So that's our real-life crime corner. Thank you to everyone out there who sent that in because I didn't I, – I don't, I don't read that local news. No. Um, you know, it's – not a lot goes on. We live in a small town. Right. <laughs> and like uh, living in a, in a small beach town. So uh, proud of you guys. Thanks for sending that in. And uh, that was our real life crime corner for the week. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. the Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is the revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.